Hey, what's up, Fit Fam? It's that time of the month again. We're gonna go over this month, February's 2020, February 2024 Strength Club workout for you. So, you got the templates here. You know what we do here. You see the structure of it. Very similar to what we've been doing. Um, so we're gonna start with our core work and our mobility work at the beginning. You know, we consider this, uh, we like to think of this as ramping, which is range of motion, activation, movement preparation. Um, also, we can think of it as like just building up the intensity to kind of start when we're cold. You know, we're gonna be a little tired maybe. Don't know if we're in the mood for this workout yet. So let's get started with these few exercises and then we'll have a little bit more energy. So, you know, we like to start with those hangs. Again, um, I know most of you love the hangs. Not everybody though, they're not uh, everybody's cup of tea, but they will get you stronger. They're great for that shoulder mobility, breathing, back decompression here. So remember you wanna focus on your breathing as you're doing these long, deep breaths. Fill up that torso, hold it for a couple seconds, then slowly let that air out, pushing the air out, that air out as much as you can. You'll feel your abs actually wall up as you start to really force all that air out here. And then obviously you can use your feet on the box if you need to. And again, just make sure you're challenging yourself. Embrace the idea of like, this is gonna get you stronger. And it's only 30 seconds, everybody, okay? Now technically someone's gonna go, actually Josh, it's 60 seconds because we have to do it twice. And you're right. We break it up into 30 so less people complain about it, okay? So we got our hangs and we're gonna match that up with our yoga plexes here. So remember on the yoga plexes, we're thinking about that hands on the box, you wanna keep that weight over that hand here. So position is gonna be important, squeezing that back glute, hand and arm are right next to that front leg. So you're not using your arm to hold your whole body up. You're using it to get in that proper position where you're pushing down and then we're gonna open up with that arm big circle here following your elbow or excuse me following your fingertips with your eyes we're going to open up those hips get those hip flexors feel a bit of a stretch through there get those glutes working here and open up that thoracic spine here as well so just a nice gentle movement and of course if you need to you can always put that back knee on the floor as you're working this one but get great way to kind of get the body opened up here so we'll get a couple sets of each of those on that second set of those yoga flexes we'll go over to the other leg so we got two sets of each of those the second grouping for our ramping is gonna start with our band half kneeling chop and press. So again, another classic here. Great again for opening up those hips, getting those glute squeezes. This is also great for core work here as well. So notice how as Coach Tia is pressing out, she's not letting that band pull her hands up. So you do want that challenge of that band feeling heavy here. Don't be afraid of that. It's really gonna get that core activated as you're pressing out. When you get that long lever there, it's gonna be those lats and those abs that are gonna keep those hands pulled down, squeezing that back glute tight, driving that front big toe into the floor to open up those hips and also open up that thoracic spine again. So you might be seeing a theme here. What we know for a lot of people is shoulders and thoracic spine get really tight, hip flexors get really tight, so we spend a good amount of time working on uh, compensating for that to get you moving better. So we're gonna pair this up, we'll do a set on each side, we're gonna pair this up with our sandbag pivot halos. Now this is a newer exercise here, now you can see, I'm grabbing the bag by the ends because that's gonna give me the most room for the sandbag. We don't need to go heavy on this one, you're seeing how I'm also pivoting as I'm working through. So you're gonna pivot and use those hips to pull that through, as opposed to when we do like our tall kneeling or half kneeling kettlebell halos. This one, we're getting the whole body moving very similar to the way we were using that pivot press last month, but this is gonna open up those shoulders. Now, if you are feeling any sort of discomfort as you're working this one, you can always go to a kettlebell or a dumbbell to work that as well. But I do like the way we use those hips for some momentum here, and this is a bit of a, uh, let's say a faster pace than we're usually used to during our ramping, but it actually feels pretty good. It will get your heart rate up just a little bit. And then we'll go back to those uh, chops and presses, another set of those, come back to these. So a couple sets of each, and then we're gonna move on. So now that we got the body feeling good, got our energy up a little bit more, now we're gonna work on a little bit of power. And what we're gonna start with today is our step up presses combined with our swing. So for that step up press here, we want to be thinking just like we did with the pivot press last month, we're thinking power and speed on this step up press. So you can, you want to use a weight that allows you to get some resistance there to feel what we're doing, but not so heavy that you're struggling. So you can see here I'm crushing that box, using that momentum to throw that dumbbell up to the ceiling. Now we're going to do five reps on each side. So it's opposite hand and foot. But again, I don't want you to think about doing five reps 
one time, I want you to think about doing one rep five times. And what I mean by that is every single rep, you reset and think, I'm gonna throw this kettlebell right through the ceiling now. Deep breath, push that air out as you punch that dumbbell up to the ceiling. Reset on each rep. You don't have to fly through this one. We'll get five in on each side, and then we're gonna go to our kettlebell swings. So again, here, uh, you can do five dead stop swings. You can see Coach Cat right now stopping, parking that kettlebell, hiking it back, keeping those hips low as she starts it, driving through those heels. You can also do those 10 repetitions. Focus on crisp swings here and really thinking relaxed at first and then tension as you start that swing, squeezing those glutes tight. Notice how she's pulling those kneecaps up, driving those heels into the floor. You don't have to go real heavy on this one either. We want smooth, crisp swings. So it's not about the weight being heavy, it's about just getting everything moving here. So err on the side of being a little bit lighter, of course, after that first set. If you feel like, hey, I could have gone a little bit heavier, that's great. I don't want you walking away from the swings feeling like, wow, that was a lot of effort I had to put into the swings. I want you to walk away feeling like, hey, I feel pretty good from the two exercises I just did. I'm gonna give myself 60 to 90 seconds, maybe two minutes to chill, breathe, get another set in, and then we're gonna move on. So by this point in the workout, you're feeling good, energy's up, yeah, your heart rate's been up, but it's coming back down again, and we're controlling everything, and now we're gonna move on to our strength supersets for this month. So again, some of you are familiar with these, some of you not. So a superset for us is two exercises, complementary exercises, which means maybe similar movement patterns, but also if it's a similar movement pattern, it also means similar muscle groups that are gonna be work. This is where we build some muscular endurance. So for example, in the first one, we have our cyclist squats and we're gonna match that up with our band anti-rotational um, slider lunges. So on the cyclist squat, you can see here, we're going for five reps. This should be close to, if not the same weight that you had been working in January. If you worked up to that heavy five rep weight, that's the weight you wanna be working on here. Now again, in the first week, first set, maybe you start a little bit lighter because we need maybe we need a warm set because five heavy reps, that's tough. Maybe you go a little bit lighter on that first set, but that second set, if you can, you wanna take that weight up. We want five, quality cyclist squats here you can see coach matt's working that double racked front or you know front rack kettlebell uh squat on the cyclist squats you can use whatever weights you prefer there as long as you're doing them well here so we get five good reps in taking your time you're not rushing and then the second exercise is that anti-rotational slider lunge here so squeeze that back remember the the inside foot is planted on the floor back foot's on that slider you want to step out so that there is tension in that band enough that you have to resist that rotation. It doesn't have to be super heavy. And again, the band and your movements are going to tell us whether that band is a little too heavy because if it starts to pull you over, we know it's a little too heavy and that's okay. Brace those abs nice and tight. Squeeze that back glute on the way down. Now here you can see I'm also working that split squat. So for anybody who feels like the slider lunge for any reason is not working, you can go to that split squat, although I have found in my experience, I find the slider lunge to be a little bit easier than the split squat because as you're going down here, you're actually sliding in, you get, a, you get that solid base. That split squat challenges us because that's that, uh, that split stance is less stable than when our feet are next to each other. But that's up to you. Slide that foot back, squeeze that back glute, take your, way, take your time on the way down. Focus on that front leg doing the work. You're gonna do 10 on each leg here. So five cyclist squats, then you're over to those lunges. Um, also here, if you wanna challenge yourself a little bit more, you can wear a weight vest as you're working this one to make it a little more challenging. But again, you're gonna find out in that first set, after you've done those five heavy reps, these 10 reps are really gonna be taxing. So take your time, take those extra breaths when you need to, but focus on quality reps there. After you're done with that superset, you should have that feeling of, I want a couple minutes, one to two minutes to breathe and get my mind straight for the next superset, which for this workout is gonna be chin-ups and then our sled row pull. So as you, all of you, if you were here in January, are familiar with both of these because we work them both, but we're gonna challenge ourselves for five heavy chin-ups. Again, on the chin-ups, I will say this, this is one, there are a few exercises that I would prefer you go a little bit lighter to nail your form 
and that range of motion as opposed to making it heavy and hard if you're not getting that full range of motion. So err on the side of being a little bit lighter because you're gonna get more out of owning the top of that, that chin up, whether you go pronated grip or chin up grip, you're gonna get more out of it if you allow yourself to feel like get to the top and really own that position. Now, I know that last rep, maybe if that's the one that doesn't look great, but again, I would prefer five really quality reps and just like everything else you're doing, if you need to break it down into thinking of it as one rep five times, do one rep five times. So we want five quality chin-ups, then we're headed right over to the sled and we're gonna rope pull down. Now, last month, we are going a little bit heavier. We're gonna see, you might not necessarily be able to pull that same way because we've already worked those muscles that are also gonna be working some of those muscles that are gonna be working during this rope pull. So again, first week, start a little bit lighter and I'd rather you find out, hey, I can, I can go heavier and add some weight for that second set. But the first week, we're always thinking, let's learn the routine and find the right weights. Weeks two and three, we build up, and then week four is really where we wanna challenge ourselves again. So you go five chin-ups, and then you're right over to the sled, pulling it all the way down the floor, turn it around, the next person will pull it back, or you'll go to it on your next set here. So it's just one way down the floor. Notice how Coach Matt's keeping those knees pushed apart, staying low. He's not trying to use his legs here. Again, if you have to use your legs on this one right away, it's too heavy. If you need to use your legs for a couple reps at the very end, that's okay. I mean, those muscles are gonna be working. We wanna work them a little bit as well, but I'd rather you focus on a weight that you can control without needing those legs at first. And this is how we're really gonna work all those muscles. And you know, you're gonna experience some fatigue there again, because these supersets are based on this idea of, let's try a heavy weight and then build some um, endurance through those muscles by going to a lighter weight on the second exercise that gives us more time under tension. So these supersets should take anywhere from um, really 60 to two minutes to complete, just depends on the exercise and how well you're doing them. But 60 to two minutes, maybe 90 seconds is that sweet spot. So that's a lot of time to be working. Your heart rate will be up, those muscles are gonna feel it. And the difference between this and what we were doing last month, which was those five rep heavy weights and just working through like a circuit is that now that we've worked these, we get them a little bit more time under tension, we are gonna get a different result from those muscles, which is building up that ability to do more work over time. Whereas with our strength sets from January, it was how much weight can we absolutely push for just five reps? Um, so this is a little bit more conditioning at, that we add to this one. So it's nice to come back to this every few months and work this style. I actually prefer it. I like the uh, combination of the exercises. It also allows us to work some um, exer you know, multiple movement patterns, uh, multiple variations of an e a movement pattern exercise and uh, get a few more in that month. So we're gonna get two to three sets in the first week. I anticipate most of you are gonna be able to get two sets in. You may have time for a third, second, third, and fourth week. You're gonna have to push to get to that third set. It's really gonna come down to your desire to get it in. Now, I also wanna say, if you get two solid sets in, that's a lot of good work. You're gonna get some great results from it. That third set is definitely for those people that feel like, hey, I went a little bit lighter on my first set to get comfortable. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna try a third set. You don't have to force it, but sometimes that's where the difference can come from as long as you are doing it well and your body's feeling good as you're doing it. So two to three sets is the goal for this workout. And then we're gonna move on to our finisher here. This month, we're gonna have three exercises that we're working. Um, so again, keeping it simple. A lot of stuff that you are familiar with, the goal is to do it very well. So we have our push-ups, five to 10 reps. Again, push-ups and chin-ups, the two exercises that um, I find to be, again, they can be the most challenging because they require that body weight strength. You have to have enough strength to push your body weight around, but they also are two exercises that you are able to do anywhere. If anybody ever said, hey, can you do a chin up? You grab a bar and you can do it. If somebody said, hey, can you do a 500 pound squat? You need a bunch of weight to do that, right? These are exercises that show that you have um, not only the ability, but the desire to do them well. You have to want to do these things well to get the most out of them. But five to 10 solid reps, again, anyway, if you need to use the bar and have an elevate, have your chest elevated, 
If you can do them flat on the floor, if you need to make them tougher, you put your feet on the box, you put a weight vest on, whatever you can do to challenge yourself, you want to be able to get at least five in. If you can work up to 10, that's great. If you can do eight, nine, or 10, that's also a sign that you could challenge yourself a little bit more with some heavier or heavier variation or more challenging variation, and then just keep, you know, get back down to that five to six. Then you keep working that variation long enough, that's gonna become a six to seven rep weight, a seven to eight rep weight, and eight to 10 rep weight, and that's how we see progress with those. So don't be afraid of making those tough. Let the coach help you if you have any questions. Again, push-ups, it's nice to say, hey coach, can you watch my push-ups? And maybe we can offer some advice there as well. The second exercise is our echo bike. Um, I know, everybody's favorite. It's, first of all, it's only five calories. And also it's so effective that it's like, why wouldn't we use this? For the amount of time you put in and the result you get from it, which is really challenging, that power production, that ATP and creatine energy system that we use, also, because the residual effect there is you walk away with that heart rate up, we're gonna be burning some more calories even after we're done with that exercise. So it's not about how many calories we're burning during the exercise or during a workout, it's how much energy we use up that we can keep burning calories after the workout if your goal is obviously to lose weight and body fat here. So we got five calories on the bike, and then the last exercise is our sled push and drag. Now I will say, this combination from push-ups to echo bike to sled push and drag, is a mother your butt. You're gonna learn a couple things about yourself. The first thing you're gonna learn is, do you have the desire to challenge yourself with this? It's okay to be scared, it's okay to maybe not want it at first, but the more you want it, the more you're gonna get out of this because it's easy to talk yourself out of these three. This is a challenging combination, but you will get better from doing these things. Uh, it just takes some time. Yes, you're gonna feel miserable, I guess, if that's the word. I mean, it's probably not the best choice of words, but yeah. Heart rate's gonna be up, you're gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel like, I don't wanna do another set. Give yourself one, two, three minutes. We have plenty of time. Give yourself that time to reco recover. But remember also, think about what you're saying to yourself in between and while you're doing it. If you're telling yourself, this sucks, I hate this, I don't like the way I feel, of course you're not gonna wanna go back for a second set. If you remind yourself that how I'm feeling now makes everything else easier. Doing this work makes things that are not as hard as this start to feel easier. And now that applies to your life outside of the gym, just keep that in mind and look at the other people working hard. And if you do have any of that doubt, tell somebody, tell a coach, tell a member, because our, you guys are awesome about supporting each other. And don't be afraid to remind a member that you see struggling a little bit with their confidence. Just say, hey, you're doing great, let's do another one. You got one more in you. I'm not trying to force you to do anything. You wanna keep the sled light, keep it light and move it fast. You wanna make it heavy and keep it a little slower and get more intentional, you can do that as well. What we care about is that whatever you're doing, the intention is I'm gonna make this challenging, whether it's to do it light but do it very fast or heavy and more intentional. The, in, the idea is that you have to be challenging yourself and that's how you're gonna get more out of this workout. I know they are tough. I also know that you are tougher and we can make any adjustments. I think a big thing that we see with people with these workouts, and we experience ourselves as well, is this uh, a bit of anticipating how hard it's gonna be, and that anticipation can lead us to not necessarily want to do it. So, if that's what you're feeling sometimes, one, talk about it, two, start a little bit lighter, ease your way into it, but, Pay attention to the things you're telling yourself because if you're saying these negative things, if you're talking yourself out of it, if you're putting yourself down, that's what's gonna hold you back. You are in control, we are here to support you, but I also know a lot of you, you are so much stronger than you give yourself credit for, so don't be afraid to challenge yourself with all these exercises, but especially when we get to that finisher, keep a positive mindset with it and you're gonna get more out of it. Okay, so, um, went on a little diatribe at the end there, but hopefully this video is helpful. If you have any questions about any of the exercises, please reach out, ask the coaches, and uh, let's have an awesome month, everybody.